So with Windows 7 being EOL, aka end of life, we all have this situation if we use Windows on our network that, well, the operating system is now depreciated. It's no longer safe to use Windows 7. That's right. right? I was going to say, it hasn't been appreciated for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, Windows 7 is is now what we call end of life. And, yeah. and some folks have said, well, I don't need Microsoft support. I've never once in my entire Windows usage ever required Microsoft support. Right. Sorry, and I'm all tangled up here. There we go. Now I'm better. So if you, do, if you don't ever have to call Microsoft support, why does it matter to you if Microsoft no longer supports Windows 7? Right. Well, isn't it patches and such? Yeah. 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 So... yeah. so consider this. That's support. So when we think of support, we think about being able to pick up the phone yeah. and call technical support. Well, that's not at all what it's talking about. What it's talking about is that the support of basically f them fixing problems that they find is gone. Right. So what that means is whenever a hacker finds a way to compromise a Windows 7 machine, Microsoft used to fix it and roll it out as an update and, and probably break a couple things that, along the way, but yeah. inevitably fix the bug that was causing hackers to be able to get into your system. Well, now they're not going to do that. So as hackers find exploits in Windows 7, Microsoft is just going to say, well, it's no longer supported. Right. So we are not going to be patching that. And now if you're running Windows 7, you've got this very bad situation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe you've got a mix of Windows 7, Linux, Windows 10, and, and that one Windows 7 machine, or God forbid, a Windows XP machine. Sadly, those still exist. They still exist. Yeah. Right? So if any of those exist that are no longer being patched or supported, it can be a really bad situation because that's one it's a door. It's a doorway, like a back door into your computer. No, your network, all of, all of your devices. Okay. So we have to move to Windows 10, but maybe our computer can't handle Windows 10. I mean, we've got to get more RAM. We've got to get an SSD in order to be able to run it at a reasonably decent speed. So that means a, a, a new hard drive. And by that point, it's like, do you really sink the money into this old thing? See, you're speaking to my current situation. I have yeah. an old Windows XP system that I, I'm setting up for our kids at home yeah. so that they can use it for schoolwork and stuff separate mm -hmm. than our Family computer. Okay. So yeah. if somebody's playing games, there's still the school or computer. Yeah. But I don't want to upgrade this old system that's 10 years old. Yeah. Do you, are you really going to put a couple hundred bucks into something when you can walk into a super center and for 600 bucks, walk away with a pretty decent computer? Exactly. You know, a low end, but fast. Still. We'll say. I'm looking for the free fix. Yeah. You've already mm -hmm. got the gear. So, you know, what are you going to do? So... Do we put more RAM into it? Do we put a new hard drive into it, an SSD? And do we do all that work? Or do you just, hey, you know, wipe it and put something else on there that's powered by Linux? That's the option. That's the one. Yeah. So that's what I do. <laughs> that's what I've done. And that's what I continue to do. And that's so. what you will also do once you hear <laughs> why. <laughs> so personally, so this is kind of like a, a personal opinion piece, but... Personally, what I have been leaning toward is Linux Mint okay. over the past little while. Because the question comes up, well, what distro, okay, this is a new word if you're a Windows user. Yeah. It's short for distribution. Mm -hmm. What distro of Linux or what flavor of Linux are you going to use? Mm -hmm. Because you... a lot of the Linux names are based on foods. That, that is true. true. Yes. Linux Mint. What yes. flavor? Mint. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. What flavor? So the computer that I was talking about, I had tried a few different distros. I had um, Ubuntu Mate. Mm -hmm. uh, I had... Also a good option. Um, I had um, Lindos uh, from Linspire. Linspire. Yeah, yeah Linspire. No longer Lindos. Yeah, that, I know. If it was that Windows, was a throwback. That's like That was the Windows throwback. XP. No, no, Linspire. Yeah. Uh, but I ended up uh, settling on a Linux Mint. Yeah. yeah. See, and I had, was it Zorin? Zorin OS. On here yeah. before I switched to Cloud Ready. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Linux Mint for me, it's a Debian-based mm -hmm. system. So this is the same 
core that Ubuntu is based on. Right. So I, I don't have to, and, and I'm a very big Debian fan. Uh, all my servers are like Debian uh, Buster, uh, stretch before that, and I'm always up to date with the latest in Debian systems and 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 so uh and i run stable i don't tend to run testing unless it's it's feature locked and ready to go into stable mm -hmm. um and what that means again if you're new to the linux world um debian is basically it, it, there's a hierarchy so you've got like debian you've got red hat you've got a couple other ones as well but those are kind of the big ones that i think you're going to encounter yep. we don't need to really clutter the landscape but so debian being one that it's going to be based on, it could be Ubuntu, it could be Linux Mint, it could be uh, any number. Uh, you mentioned Ubuntu Mate, another one, which is essentially Ubuntu with a different interface. Yes, because Mate is like the menu, the That's de right. the the desktop environment. So um, now Linux Mint is also Mate, but it's it's based on Ubuntu. Correct. All right, so. It, it's like this whole, it's like this tree of hierarchy of where did this Linux come from? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you've got Debian is like this fantastic server environment, but then Ubuntu Canonical is creating a desktop version of that. And it's fantastic. It's called Ubuntu. And that's where Ubuntu Mate comes from. And then you've got Linux Mint, which is a fork of that. Another word for you. It's a, like they've copied the, the code base and then they've tweaked it and made it the way that they want it. Mm -hmm. And that's the one that I've settled on and it's fantastic. So I get all the benefits of Debian. I get the benefits of Ubuntu and I get the benefits of the Linux Mint community as well. Right. And so I end up with this extremely polished desktop operating system that will run on my old hardware that I don't have to upgrade the RAM, that I don't have to buy a new SSD and it works fantastically. And, it, and it's fairly familiar. I don't mm -hmm. have to relearn the entire desktop paradigm in order to get used to it. It's right. pretty intuitive. Like I could, Very. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. now you talked about stable version versus yes. experimental. I think it was test. The, test test. Yeah. So for somebody who's SID, we'll just say. getting into this and they're like, oh, I downloaded the experimental. What's the pitfall to experimental versus stable for them? Uh, testing uh, or SID is what Debian calls it. So way up at the higher level of the hierarchy, which you're probably not going to touch as a new Linux user. Okay. So remember that Debian is like up here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So SID is a testing version of Debian. Uh, stable is, is what they consider stable. It's been tested. Yep. Okay. So it's already gone through the testing phase. If you were going up here, going to testing is going to end up giving you newer packages. So like when the new version of GIMP comes out, GNU image manipulation program, you're going to have the latest and greatest right. immediately part of the operating system, but it may not be stable. It may crash. It may have bugs and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff because it hasn't gone through that testing phase yet. Right. Once it hits stable, Ubuntu users would say it's older version. Right. Right. Debian users will say it's stable. Yes. It, it doesn't crash. It doesn't have any problems. Okay. So that's a big difference between Ubuntu and Debian. Debian stable means it's gone through a lengthy, maybe two year testing process. Like proofreaders that are using yeah. it and it's fixing it. It's ready to go. It, it is safe to use yeah. and it's stable. Okay. So it's rock solid. Ubuntu, a little more bleeding edge, a little more cutting edge, and, and the software versions are going to be a little bit newer, um, and the package managing and everything else is a little bit tweaked for mm -hmm. end users, mm -hmm. but you're not dealing anymore with testing versus stable. It's just, here's Ubuntu, yep. and that's what you get. So it's now it comes down to, is it LTS? Any guesses what that means? Or is it not LTS? Uh, mm -hmm. Lifetime service? Very close. Uh, Long-term support. Long-term support. Okay. Yes. So what that means, so when you see an Ubuntu release that is LTS, long-term support, which is currently, I, is it 12.04 is the current LTS? It's no, no, it can't be 12. No. Come on, 2012. One. No, uh, 18.04. Yes. Um, so, uh, man, I'm in the past. <laughs> Today you're in the past. That's because I talked about Lindos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so LTS means that version is going to continue being supported. Think of, along the terms of what I mentioned about Microsoft. It's right. going to continue getting those patches and fixes for a very long time, mm -hmm. years. Okay. So if you're new and you don't want to have to reinstall every couple of years or go through the upgrade process, go with LTS. If you like the brand new versions, 
go with the current version, which right now it's 2020. Uh, it's not quite April, but because it's almost April, that means that uh, 2004 is going to be coming out um, in April because it represents the date. Right. Okay? So it's every October and April. Um, it so, celebrates its birthday in April like I do. Is that what happens? Exactly. Yes. Exactly okay. like that. <laughs> so the most recent version then, therefore, would be 1910. 19.10. Um, so I mean, those just versions. just blew somebody's mind by explaining that a little bit. Because somebody's like, that's how they got the that's numbers. Yeah. There was four. 10 iterations of it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's October 2019. Um, so that version would be the latest current version of Ubuntu, but it's not LTS. Right. Mm -hmm. So you'd, you'd have to then go to 2004 when it's released through the upgrade path, which is pretty easy. Yeah. Now, Linux Mint, I believe, subscribes to a very similar model. Um, but they base theirs on the LTS of Ubuntu. So you're going to get LTS, uh, I believe, anyway. Well, but they have the iterations throughout as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, like right now, it's Linux Mint 19, I believe, 19.2, something like that. So so it's just it's how it trickles down. So that's what I've settled on is Linux Mint because I find for my laptop, for my desktop, it's like the rock solid. It's got, it's got current software. I can install whatever I want on it. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful and it works great. Yep. You mentioned Cloud Ready. Yes. Which basically has turned Sasha's laptop into. It's a Chromebook. A Chromebook. Yes. So you took your old laptop and turned it into a Chromebook. And how was, how was that for you? It's great. I mean, it, it works well. I, I have all of my access through the cloud, right? Yeah. So I, I mean, you're already I use, using Google Docs. I and use, stuff? Yeah, exactly. I use Google Docs and slides and, you know, all of that. And and so it was really intuitive for me. Like I had no problem switching to cloud ready. But that from what? It was Zorin that I from had. Zorin. And before that? Before that I was was I Windows I must have been Windows at some point. Wait. Yeah. Windows I was Windows seven. I was She's a got sticker. the sticker. <laughs> <laughs> but I block things out I don't like. I don't remember this. Fair enough. Yeah. And Jeff, you mentioned Lindos, Lindos, and Windows Let's, XP. Yes. So you're more old school than me. Uh, yeah. What are you running at home for real? Uh, so on my, we have the two systems. Well, we have three systems. There's okay. my wife's Mac because she okay. likes Mac. Yeah. Um, on our family computer, we have a dual boot system of Linux oh. Mint and Windows 10. Nice. And the reason for the dual boot is because of computer games. Yeah. I was going to guess gaming. Yeah. It's going to be gaming. gaming. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, my kids are now at the age where they're like, you know, they're getting into some of those. Roblox. Oh, they're past that now. What else requires Windows? What requires Windows? It's, uh, it's all Roblox. So, um, some of our. Uh, Fortnite. Yep, some of our Steam games mm -hmm. uh, are Windows only. Um, what else do I have? Uh, oh, goodness. I'm trying to think of some of the games that are Windows only. You don't game on your laptop. I do not. This is strictly that. like the strictly business. Yeah. Uh, strictly the business. That's right. I'm, I'm completely blanking on what all's on the computer that's so, not through Steam. Okay, so gaming on the Windows 10. Yeah. And you, Jeff has mentioned something that we haven't talked about yet tonight. The dual boot? Dual booting. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that he's chosen. So your computer is obviously good enough to run Windows 10 anyways. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's a different scenario in some ways. However, if your computer is able to support it and you still want to go the route of Linux. Yeah. You can do dual booting. Can you explain to us what that means? Yeah. So with dual boot, I have partitioned the hard drive. Uh, That's a fancy word, Jeff. Yeah. Okay. So partition means I took the space of the hard drive yeah. and I segmented it off into different portions. And so... Is that hard to do? No, it's really does easy to do. Does it have to be a straight 50-50? It does not have to be a straight 50-50. And so my initial boot was not Windows. It was Linux. So, so I started, originally it was just Linux. Yeah. It originally, because it, it was a computer I built. Okay. So it was a blank hard drive and my first install was Linux mm -hmm. because when I'm doing the install, it says, do you intend to do a dual boot? And so, really? yeah. So that was one of the install options. And I'm like, yes, I intend to do a dual boot. And so that's what happened is mm -hmm. I set up the dual boot. Uh, I'm blanking on what the dual boot program is called. Um, G Parted? No, no, it's uh, uh, the installer process. Yeah, I'm, I'm blanking on what it's called. Anyway, um, so that popped up in the install and it's like, okay, how much do you want to partition on your hard drive for oh, okay. your Linux operating yeah, system? Yeah. And so I set up 
it was not quite a 50 50 split because i need a ton of space for the games that get installed right yeah so uh it was more windows i think it's 25 75 split Mm -hmm. all in all on the hard drive uh that was the first time i did the install i've since wiped the computer reinstalled it Mm -hmm. um and so that was when i had my spinning hard drive okay and then after i installed linux i booted up again installing windows Uh, on the second partition since wiping out that and going with my ssd uh it's uh the ssd i think is 500 gigs and i have two terabytes spinning hard drive yeah for and so that's where my data is on the spinning hard drive yeah and then i'm using the ssd for the operating system and that's a 50 50 split okay very complicated sounding but no it's but not but from the scenario of a user who say is using windows and wants to experience Linux and, and, and use Linux because it's safer. Because I know I can surf the internet. My kids can use the computer. I don't have to worry about viruses like I do with Windows. Those kinds of things. Um, so let's say your kids sit down at the computer and they want to switch between Windows and Linux or vice versa. How is that process? So all we have to do is we, um, if I'm in Windows, we go through a system restart. And then on the boot, mm-hmm. it brings up the dual boot screen. The default, if the computer just starts up by itself, yeah. is to go into Linux. Yes. I want it to go into Linux automatically. If, mm-hmm. the, say, Windows does a system update in the middle of the night or something. Right. And the computer boots, I want to know that I'm going into Linux where it's a safe environment for the computer to sit mm-hmm. as opposed to Windows. Okay. Uh, where it could be exposed to something. So sure. it's an automatic boot into Linux, but at the dual boot screen, they can drop down the menu and select the Windows boot. Brilliant. And the kids, know how, the kids know how to work it. It's totally easy, and they know when they can switch between Linux and Windows. Yep. Not a problem. So it's, you want a game? Get into Windows. Yep. If you want to do anything else, Linux is where it's at. That's right. And I mean, our, our daughter just turned nine, and she's been doing it now for two years. So if a seven-year-old can do it, yep. like, it's not that hard. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. Linux, Mint, Ubuntu, all these technologies that we're talking about, Debian, they're available for free. Mm-hmm. They're absolutely free. Mm-hmm. And you can just download them off of their respective websites. Um, Cloud Ready, same thing. How much did that cost you? It's zero dollars. Zero dollars. So I you like can't that. even say this is a a sales pitch because it's free. <laughs> hey, right. you know, here you go, take it. So yeah. that's 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 where it's at. So that's good. I think it's a good solution. So hey, let us know. Comment below how you're utilizing open source operating systems technologies and how it's able to you know in Jeff's environment help keep his kids safe, help to keep his computer safe from Mm -hmm. infiltration. Sasha, it's breathed new life into an old laptop. It's given her the ability to access her cloud-based applications like Google Docs and and you mentioned spreadsheets, all that kind of stuff. And, And you can do it from there. You can jump onto any other computer and you've got access to it. For me, I just need a powerful Linux desktop operating system on my laptop. And that's where Linux Mint comes in for me. How's it impacting you? What is open source doing for you lately? Comment below. We'd love to hear from you.